All right, everybody. Today, I have the man I respect the most in this industry. Um, should really require no introduction because if you're in the insurance industry, you got to know who this man is. But uh, Mr. Jeremy Olson, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to uh, you know speak with us um, today. Oh, my pleasure. And I actually kind of wish I was down there again in your office. Yeah, that was five, six months ago. But yeah, whenever you're in Southern California, yeah, that was a, a great meeting we had. Uh, thank you for stopping by and looking forward to us uh, making a stop there too. But although everybody already knows you, let's just make sure we have all the bases covered. Just a few rapid fire questions here. Sure. Uh, your your uh, book size currently? Uh, currently at 40 million in premium, just over. <laughs> Unbelievable. A uh, number of employees to run that operation? Uh, we have 40. 40, yeah. I, I think I like that number 40 for some reason, so. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You know, we're at uh, 13 million with 13 employees. So I think that's kind of like the number uh, one employee per million, depending on how much you want to grow. But yeah, trying to follow your footsteps. And then how about the progress of RPOA? Oh, it's been such a fun ride uh, starting RPOA. You know, I, I look back 25 years ago when I started, I would have never thought I was leading a coaching and training platform, but that truly has been a passion of mine for really my whole career is just talking to agency owners and staff and really just trying to get people the best they can be. And so it, it truly has been just humbling being able to work with so many agency owners. Yeah. Well, yeah, the resource uh, there is just incredible. And um, how many members do you guys have now? Uh, we are about 6,000 users and we're, we're in about 1,500 agencies or so. Wow. So definitely, if you guys don't uh, are subscribed or a member, uh, I highly recommend it. My agency, uh, my staff has greatly um, benefited from your programs. And even if you aren't a member, just being a member of the group, uh, both both groups, you know, you have the RPOA, uh, the main group, you know, which mm -hmm. is for producers and everybody. And you have the agency side group, which you started recently. And there's so yeah. much quality information and, and insights from you there. Yeah, we just, uh, again, we just love sharing what works. We're very blessed to have a great team. And if, if our team and their success can help others, that's what we love to do. So yeah, the, the two pages are just the main role play at the Olson agency or uh, for members, we did create a separate one just for agency owners, which is RPOA agency owners. And that's just where we might have more conversations centered around compensation or hiring or training, you know, things that are more specific to just uh, owners like yourself. Mm -hmm. And there was a post on August 20th that really just, and there's so many, you know, you have so many classic posts, Jeremy, <laughs> you know, uh, but this one just, I just, it deserved more attention. Uh, and that it was titled, it was on August 20th and it was uh, what makes an agent successful. Yeah. Top three characteristics I see. Uh, and it was such a value of post. You had three points, which we want to go in depth and ask you a little bit more questions about. Uh, but it totally makes sense that uh, you wrote on there that you talked to thousands of agents over 25 years, and you could safely say these are the three most common traits. Mm -hmm. So let's get into them. Okay. Uh, number one is they make this business their thing. Uh, what I mean by this is truly have passion for the specific business. They live it not just nine to five when they're in their office, but they live, eat, breathe their agency and think about it nonstop. Um, so yeah, this to me is a prerequisite to being successful in this business, but, uh, sh share with us a little bit more what you meant by that. And, uh, some examples maybe of yourself when you catch yourself thinking like, wow, I am really into the, in this. Yeah, business. boy, if I wanted some examples, we could just call my wife right now <laughs> talk about it all the time. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I would just say in general, the agency owners that I talk to as part of my platform or just over the years, my friends, the the ones that really are successful, they, they just have a deep down passion for this. And they, like I said, they make insurance their thing. It's their hobby. It's a, it's what they like doing. You know, I'm 25 years into this now, uh, probably should be slowing down, but I'm definitely not because I love it. I truly, to this day, don't think about when I'm driving into the office at 5 a.m., like, man, I work a lot of hours. I truly do enjoy it because I've made it something that, uses what I like to do every day. Uh, and just, I, I just have a desire to be the best agent I possibly can and make my team the best that they can be. 
Uh, so the agency owners for, you know, examples, I would say, you know, when we're, we're sitting there on a weekend, if I'm with another agency owner, we are talking shop, we are talking insurance. And I, I just never, I, I totally believe in work-life balance and all that. Sometimes people can take this the wrong way that I live insurance 24 hours a day. Absolutely not. I have three great kids, a wife I've been married to for over 20 years and uh, certainly have a, a personal and separate life. But uh, I am always thinking about my business and I, I realize that, you know, it's my business that has been able to provide for me. So it's got to be something that I enjoy doing. And so that that's really all I mean by that is that the agencies that, that I find that are successful, they think about it a lot and they're always thinking, how can I be better? They're excited about it. They look forward to coming into work. I mean, every night I go to bed, I am excited to come in the next day because I truly have a passion. I always say, man, I am lucky that my grandfather and father were in this business because uh, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have found this business. And it, it truly is the one job I would say just fits me absolutely perfectly uh, with my personality. Yeah. Yeah. You're like a, uh, you're born to do this. And um, I think the important point there was that you really enjoy it. You know, I think once you're able to make this job something you really enjoy, then it doesn't seem like work. And why not spend a lot of time in something you like? Yeah, no. And I think in that post, I mentioned a, a quick story, uh, you know, of another example when uh, a farmer's agent, uh, David Seagraves, got on a plane and he actually sat next to Justin Furman, uh, who is an Allstate agent. And they were both going to an insurance class and both are members of RPOA. So they connected but they, he just had told, Justin had told me they spent three hours on the flight talking insurance. And that's what I mean. They are people that are always talking about it, looking for how can I better equip my agents to be successful in my agency? How can I make my business better? How can I enjoy it? How can I make you know, myself more successful? Those are the ones that uh, I find that really thrive in this business because they love it at the end of the day. Yeah. It's like a, it's a healthy obsession, you know, there's a lot of things you could be obsessed about, but why not, you know, make it something that's uh, uh, productive and um, something that helps others too. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you and relate with you when it comes to just being, you know, nonstop, just thinking about it and rather be in the office than, you know, do other things that other people may consider fun, but you know, work is fun. And that's why we're able to put in the hours and you know, use the creativity and energy to grow our agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I always, you know, and my wife would agree with this. And when, whenever I'm asked uh, Saturday night, hey, do you want to go out and sit at a bar? Or do you want to talk to customers about insurance? I'll take that because uh, I, I just really, really enjoy this industry. It's, it's such a, a you know, a unique position that we have to help people in their worst times. And so just leading with that and making it fun, making it something you enjoy, uh, success just truly comes. And uh, so, yeah, that's why I put that as the first point. Make yeah. it your thing. Make it your thing, you know. So I think some of the agency owners, um, you know, that is a prerequisite. And that's number, uh, number one. So I like that we started off with number one is to just go all in and uh, to give yourself a chance, you know, to uh, succeed in this industry. And the number two one is really the one that I really want to emphasize and hit home the most uh, because uh, this is a difference maker and a game changer, uh, in my opinion. They have a relentless commitment to investing in their business. Uh, Whatever is happening with their company, our industry, with staffing, with lead quality, the ones that are most successful commit to finding ways to grow no matter what. Okay, and, uh, and I want you to share your story uh, here, um, but um, commitment to investing relentlessly. Y you shared your story, uh, but I think it's worth repeating again here, you know, because um, it, it takes a lot of uh, guts. It takes a lot of uh, uh, emotional, um, you know, stability to do what you did, I feel like, and um, t share us about your story and some, 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 you know, maybe numbers that you don't mind sharing us when it comes to like financial investments that. Yeah, no, and ask me any questions. I, I always say I'm an open book. If you want a copy of my paycheck, I'm happy to. I, I don't <laughs> hide, hide anything from anybody. Uh, and, it, you know, a lot of times agents will think, oh man, this guy's 40 million. He's got it made. And no, I have the exact same 
issues with staff, the exact same issues with bills and payroll and expenses and, that anybody does, just at a, at a different scale. But uh, I think the story you're, you're referring to is back in 2019, uh, when I, I really did, for the first time in my career, feel like I had a decision to make. Uh, so like you said, you know, a relentless commitment to investing in your business. To me, I got in this business to grow. That's the only thing I care about. And that means not only growing my agency, but growing, you know, premium, but growing my team members, you know, professionally, personally, growth is everything. If you're not growing in this business, uh, you're really going to struggle. We're one of the, the very few businesses that I know of that if you grow today, it pays you tomorrow and for every year, you know, thereafter. So growth has just always in my mind been uh, non-negotiable. I will grow no matter what is thrown at me. But so 2019, uh, I was sitting uh, half a mile away from here at a restaurant called 13 Coins with my manager. And he handed me my goals for the year uh, for 2019. And that was the first time in my then 22 years that I really questioned was I going to be able to continue doing this model? Was I going to continue to be able to hire, to add staff and, you know, to, to grow. And I, that's just not in my DNA. I don't know how not to grow. Uh, but the goals that were presented to me were almost doubling my, what I would say was already pretty good production back then. I would have to double it to be able to continue to earn bonus and, and grow at the level that I, that I needed to, to, to achieve that. And so I left that breakfast uh, again, not knowing. And I, I would say a lot of agency owners, my size would say, go, go home, cut 10 people, take their payroll and save money. And once your company then changes their mind on this direction, uh, you can go back in. And I, 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 again, just don't know how to do that. Uh, because every year that you don't grow, you're, you're impacting every year after that. And so to me, I always just look at long term, where do I want to be? For me, my number at my size is I must grow by two and a half million a year. That's just what I, that's how I staff in terms of numbers, in terms of policies that we have to sell every month. That's what I'm looking at. And, you know, for me at 40 million, we have uh, just over 90% retention. So you think about that, I lose 4 million out the back door before I even open the door. So I've got to write six and a half, seven million 7 million to do that. Uh, and so again, it, it was just a very tough couple of days. So I, I went home after that. And again, I, I would, you know, I talked to my wife, I talked to my leadership team, like, man, I, I don't know how I can do this. And Seattle is a, at that time was a, a very difficult hiring environment. Uh, I think I was spending $6,000 a month on Indeed ads to try to hire people. And I was lucky if I got one interview every six months. I sit next to a lot of big corporations, Google, okay. Amazon, Microsoft, and it, it was tough. And so I knew to hit those numbers, I would have to hire 10 people. And so that's what I worked backwards from. How do I get 10 people? I also knew I needed to write three or 400 more policies a month. How do I get that? And so the, the two things that I did, I researched the state of Washington where it was the easiest to hire, where the hiring environment was uh, more friendly. Mm -hmm. And I remember I called my leadership team, Cameron and Kristen at that point, and I, I, they answered the phone and I said, guys, we're heading east. And I, I decided to open a scratch agency 250 miles away from Seattle, just where I could hire. And I had never done this. I had probably been to that city three times in my life, even though my mom was born there, uh, but just didn't know anything about it. And so I spent the next three weeks uh, putting ads all over the place in, in that city and uh, then drove over Thursday night. And between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we had 30 interviews, uh, just one at a time, back to back to back every hour for 10 hours a day. And Sunday night, we cut it down to 11. We hired 11 people and uh, started working internet leads in that site. We had never purchased a single lead at that point in my career, but I knew that's what it was going to take to be able to grow was adding something different 
adding more people and a different way of getting business. And so we entered the lead game. Uh, and I, I remember right after that, after we hired, I called my uh, lender and I borrowed a million dollars because that to me is how important growth is. Um, and, you know, real numbers, people always ask me, like, how could you go borrow a million dollars? Weren't you nervous? No, because I, I know the vision is growth. And with growth, no matter what it takes to get there, you're always going to be more successful. So if, if I look back and, you know, I did, I truly worked for two years for zero, did not take home a dime. And after 22 years, yeah, that was like, man, this does not feel good. I think I've been fairly successful. I've grown a book, but I'm not, I'm not taking home anything. Uh, but to me, the alternative, first of all, cutting 10 people that I consider my family and, you know, part of my agency, I, I didn't, it was not an option for me. But, uh, you know, real numbers financially, if I look back, if I would have made that decision to cut 10 people, we would have, instead of growing two and a half million, I'm just guessing, and I have no numbers to back this up, but just, just kind of guessing I would have lost a million dollars a year. So after two years, I probably would have been minus two million. Instead, at the end of those two years, with that million dollars spend, I was five million bigger. So the difference in that is seven million dollars for a million. And you you've heard my um, how I, I really like to simplify things. And to me, insurance is is just is no different than me saying, Dan, if you reached into your wallet right now, give me a ten dollar bill. I'll pay you five dollars for the rest of your life. You would take that deal, Very and that months. is. And that is the same thing with what I did, just at a, at a bigger scale. So I invested a million and I grew 7 million compared to had I not. So, you know, whether you're earning 8%, 10%, whatever the number is, that's, you know, call it five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars in renewal income that I paid 1 million. And I'll get that five or 600,000 every year for the rest of my life. So to me, that is uh, a no brainer, you know, financially, but then also mentally, I don't want to lose. I don't want to not grow. Mm -hmm. I don't want my team not to be and feel successful. And so uh, I just figure out how can I do it? And uh, I wouldn't change a thing about that direction uh, because it, it again will pay off uh, for the rest of my career, another 70 or 80 years. Man, talk about whatever it takes. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it, it wasn't easy. I mean, it, it's stressful for sure, but I, I never, never had a doubt that it, that it would work. If you hire good people, you coach, you train them, they will perform. So you just work backwards from what's the end result I want. I want growth. How do I get there? How can I make it math out for me? And, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to agency owners, and, you know, we did that hour long uh, talk with Kristen on how I look at agency growth. But a lot of times they're just looking at what they're not going to make day one. That doesn't pencil out for me if I hire this producer and I'm paying them X amount. If I don't make X plus a dollar, I'm not going to do it. And insurance, in my opinion, should not be that because mm -hmm. you've got to factor in, you know, two other things. First of all, the renewals that you're going to get forever as a result of that spend, but then also the value of your asset that you're growing every, you know, every uh, month as a result of producing a lot of business. So, you know, whether somebody's book is worth two and a half times, three times, one time, one, whatever the number is, it's an asset that we're growing. So that's got to be a part of it is how am I building my business? And also, and by the way, that hour long conversation that you had with Chris and everybody should check out because that was one spectacular hour with so many uh, valuable information, which you uh, talked about the story too, but also um, the bonus, you know, the, the, uh, the companies that, you know, reward us for growing is pretty significant too. So as scary as spending all that money and taking all that uh, action necessary to grow, if you actually break it down the way you did, as scary as it is, it's still a no-brainer because mm -hmm. the math is just so um, favors the aggressiveness 
Yeah, no, and it, there is, that's a, a big part of it. And I, I just did a post on that. I always start with when I'm talking to agency owners who are asking, should I invest? Should I go hire? Should I go borrow money to hire staff? I always start with what are you leaving on the table uh, by not achieving what you want to achieve? So for me, uh, if I had cut staff, I would have made zero bonus. Instead, I made a, a great bonus because of that growth, which basically paid back the loan day one plus the renewals are, are just a, an added benefit. But so start with that. If you're not maxing out, you work for a company that does get an annual bonus, start with that. What would I get if I hired two more people and paid them X? What would that give me on the bonus? Now, of course, you know, you have to be able to solve for, are you training these people so they can produce? Are they in the right seat? Are they doing the right things? Are they the right people? As long as they are and their output is X number of policies a month that will get you there, uh, it works. Uh, I, you know, I always say, use the company's money, the bonus to pay for your team. You, you truly can do that. I, I actually like working with agents that aren't maxing out their bonus or their, you know, their promos because they've got money to spend that they will never miss because they weren't getting it in the first place. That's a great way to look at it, you know, and I have some personal experience there too, or if I miss out on the bonus and I thought, hey, I should have spent more on lead volume or other ways then I would have made it and that return would have been so much worth the extra spend, you know, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with thinking optimistically or not too, because, uh, and, and, you know, d delaying your gratification, mm -hmm. um, but um, share with us, you know, just because it is the same philosophy, no matter what stage of your agency you're in, but it's just a much bigger scale. But I do think it helps us because I do believe some agents are scared, you know, uh, of making financial investments. But as an entrepreneur, that's the very definition of what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, what are, you know, if you don't mind sharing, like, I think you have to me personally, uh, but uh, how much do you spend on leads per month? Uh, now, and again, this is after two years ago when we had not purchased a single lead, we've really ramped up right now. I spend between 50 and $60,000 on between internet leads and live transfers. Uh, the numbers that we have found for our team to be successful, and we like our team members to write uh, at least 50 policies a month or so is what we're targeting per producer. Mm -hmm. The numbers that we have found is that they need about 12 to 15 brand new leads every single day. So uh, in terms of spend per producer, if you're looking into the lead game, uh, I would say my average producer, I buy four to $5,000 a month worth of leads for them. And believe me, and we have a whole talk on leads that you've probably seen, Dan, but I was I was that agent that I don't want to get into the lead game. Retention is very important to me. Writing good business is important to me. I don't want to be that guy known as he writes all state minimum. We, we don't do that. And so we've added a lot of pieces to try to fix those things. We have a person dedicated to calling every lead sold and trying to walk them through the importance of having a local agent. So they're not shopping every six months, the importance of having good coverage. She just, her title is literally the cleanup artist. Mm -hmm. She tries to clean up every single lead that we wrote. And we're, we're very proud that after two years of doing leads now and learning a lot of wrong things to do, uh, but we've been able to uh, keep our retention, our first year retention on leads is 87%, wow. which is incredible. It's much higher than I would have ever thought. My retention has not dipped despite putting up between four and 500 policies a month from leads. Uh, up until, you know, again, 2019, my whole book was built off of mortgage referrals and working my current book. That's all we did. Every month we would write four or 500 items. We've doubled that. So we have two arms of the business now and retention has stayed steady, but that's a lot of back end work. That's a lot of training your team to have the right conversations with these leads and not just quoting them apples with apples and selling them what they have now. It's trying to, I always joke with my team, let's, um, we try to take the, I'm an internet lead person uh, and turn that into, I love working with a local agent. 
we try to try to really turn their mindset uh, away from being a shopper. Well, when it comes to one thing you're expert on, you know, is training. So <laughs> it totally makes sense that uh, your team, and then it's, it's so valuable information, guys, that uh, you share, you know, as, as far as your, your techniques and your strategies on uh, RPOA. So we really uh, appreciate you sharing, you know, what has worked for you because that is just amazing. You know, closing ratio that you shared before, you know, retention, you know, it's just all based on training. You know, that's the key, key part to making it work in the system yeah, you it, have after. It, it is, uh, it's every, every single day working on your craft. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of my team. I mean, we have a culture now where they want to get better every day. They're always reaching out for more, more coaching. I'm not sure if you saw the show we did on Tuesday where we had Lindsay, one of our sales producers, role play live in front of thousands. Uh, a quote from start to finish. But after that, I was just like, boy, we've come a long way. That That is a year and a half. She's been on my team. Um, just truly masterful because she wants to be better. Um, and, and that's also just, you know, the volume. Uh, one, one thing I hear a lot from agents is, you know, I'll try to buy a few leads here and there. My recommendation is always don't dabble, either mm -hmm. be in or be out because your, your people need that consistent practice of doing their job. If they get a lead or two a day, then a couple of days they get none. They're never going to be very mm. good at it. They've got to do it on a, on a regular basis. It's no yeah. different than sports. I mean, basketball yeah, players just, just throw up a few hundred shots every single day. So they, they get into a pattern and a rhythm and, and become their best. Versus if they were just taking a shot or two every week, they, they probably wouldn't be as very, be as good. Yeah. It's, it's hard to make it to the NBA when you're just dabbling in it. Um, and then the same philosophy applies, you know, to another major uh, expense. The biggest one maybe for us is payroll. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, you know, feel free to share numbers if you like or not, but in general, what are your strategies when it comes to, you know, compensating them well, um, you know, and making financial incentives in that side of the business of the investment. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big believer in paying as much as you possibly can to your producers. They are your business, assuming they're the right people. You've got to first start with how do I hire the right people? But then I want them to earn great livings. Uh, when I, when I hired Kristen, uh, my team coach six years ago, one of the things I said and we're not there yet, but we're getting closer, was I want every one of my seats in my agency filled with somebody earning six figures. Uh, and again, we're not there, but that truly is my vision, is that everybody makes great livings. Uh, I, pay, wow. I pay very high commission. I pay a low base. Everybody on my team earns the same base of $2,000 a month, uh, and they earn what they sell. Uh, the same way that you and I are compensated, right? You and I are paid the same as every other farmers and all state agent in the country. Uh, one just makes more because they sell more and they're more, uh, more successful. But, um, you know, commission wise, I, I have different tiers. It ranges anywhere from 10% clear up to 25% uh, if, they're, if they're on the high end, because again, the renewals are mine forever. So I'm, I'm not shy about investing and having super high caliber people on my team. Uh, it, it does so much, you know, not only for, if you hire somebody and, you know, and they're a 70, 80, $90,000 a year worker, which is a, a good living, they're in general going to be a lot more effective than somebody if you try to go cheap and hire somebody who's never done sales, somebody whose resume doesn't demand a higher salary. Um, they're just not going to be as effective. So it's going to cost you not only on new business, it's going to cost you on renewals, on bonus, but then also uh, um, employee retention. Mm -hmm. If I look back uh, two years, I have lost, and this is on a big team of 40, I've lost one person and, wow. it, was be and it was because they had a baby. That was it. Uh, people will stay if they're compensated well. And, it, you know, a lot of that is also culture, which mm -hmm. I, I owe a lot of that, you know, to our, to our leadership team. Kristen's an amazing coach. 
amazing at leading our, our meetings every morning. I've got two awesome sales leaders in uh, Cameron and or in uh, Trevor and Ryan. Cameron is my operations guy. Just having a very solid leadership team and and you know compensating them well. You, if you compensate people well who stay with you, it makes your job so much easier. It you really know, does. It's the um, the camaraderie, you know, and then this togetherness. You work so much better as a team, it's like a sports team again, where if you've been together for a long time, you build up the chemistry or like a group of high school kids that have been playing together for so many years together. It's just a much better team than interchanging pieces. And uh, yeah, yeah the that piece. Yeah, but, you know, I, I just always look at it like, if you go inexpensive, because you're saying I can only pay somebody 40,000 a year. And, you know, certainly in some areas that might be great uh, in mine now, in my area, that would not be. But if, if I hire that person and I pay him 40 versus if I have somebody who's awesome and I'm paying him double that 80, um, just think how often am I going to have to replace this $40,000 a year worker? And if I'm, if that seat is empty, for three, four, five months producing zero because they left and I'm looking for another one that I'm going to pay 42. Mm -hmm. how, much, how much new business during those three, four, five months is it costing me? How much does it cost me to get them licensed, trained, coached, only to leave again versus if I just pay 80 up front, you keep them. And that, that certainly is not saying just go pay somebody 80 or $100,000 that doesn't earn it. They've, they've got to earn it, be the right person, have the right personality, have the right drive, all those traits. But it's just much easier to have higher caliber people on your team from the get go. Yeah. And I think when you compare the, the 80K, uh, you know, pr pr production and then the 40K, um, which mostly could be base, I think the value you're getting is more than double. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, big believer in that, too. I think it's just uh, employee retention, production-wise, just uh, taking care of your employees, I think is great. What would you say to any, and I think we already touched on this, you know, but um, I think agency owners could be in sales mode and they're natural salespeople, but they're not really investors or, or business owners and operators. Anything you would say, lastly, before we move on to number three, uh, that are a little hesitant on spending the extra money or you know, hey, if I do this myself, you know, I get to keep the commission. If I buy leads, I'll just do it myself. Yeah, um, just I would just say you just you just have to have to do it, have to commit. Do you want an easier life? It has, believe me, I've made all the mistakes in the world over my 25 years, hiring the wrong people. Um, been there. When you invest, you hire the right people, you build your agency the right way. I mean, that really should be all of our jobs as agency owners, whether you have 40 people or two or three, is every one of those people has got to be the right person. When you do that, man, the, just the stress off my own you know, stress level is so much less because I, I made that decision that I wanted all A players. Um, one philosophy that I, I incorporated from the beginning was every year as I grew by that two and a half million, I wasn't going to just take it home myself. I was going to add that to my agency so that it could continue to grow and be better. So um, 10 years ago, I might have had all $40,000 a year caliber people because that's all I could afford. The next year, Maybe I moved it to 50, the next year, 60, the next year, always trying to get a better person in the seat. And that's the same with leaders. You know, up until eight, nine years ago, it was me. I was driving around to all six agencies every day, uh, working with the staff. And, uh, you know, as I grew, my thought was, what can I add to this puzzle to make us better? So my first thing was I added Cameron on as my, he's my operations manager, just an, a huge part of my agency. Uh, the next year I added a Kristen, who's my team coach because of that two and a half million dollar growth. I didn't just take it home for myself. I want, my end goal is to grow my book so that it is just running itself. I have team members flourishing, making great livings, but to get there, I've got to have all the right pieces uh, of the puzzle in place. So every year that I grow, what else can I buy so my agency is better? Whether that's another team coach, whether that's another manager, whether that's more staff, whether that's a, more leads, whether that's better computers, whatever it is, 
what can I add to my agency to be better? Boom. Yeah, the reinvestment. Um, you're a real life example of that paying off. Um, and I think that's that's the key decisions we have to make. It's a personal choice. You know, how do you want to make your, you know, how do you want to spend your profit? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, uh, on a much smaller scale, I, I, I 100% agree with you. Reinvesting it right back into your agency year after year. Uh, it, not only is it a wise financial decision, but it's just a better financial decision for our stress levels and our overall happiness and fulfillment too. Yeah. All right. And number three, the last one. Okay. This, this is um, a, a great one, you know, because you, you hear the chitter uh, when it comes to other agents and we've got to be careful about this. Uh, but it's, a, it's, it's another game changer, you know, and the shift of attitude, I think we could help a lot, a lot of agents uh, no matter what company you represent. So they follow their carrier's direction and don't look for why it is wrong and not going to work. Um, I'm an all-state agent myself. That is my choice while I'm here, which, which I hope will be for life. I absolutely bleed blue. In my 25 years, they have made a ton of changes that were scary, that made me nervous. Um, but you know, you always spent your time figuring it out and um, making it work rather than figuring out uh, why it wouldn't work. So. Tell us about that and how, um, maybe some examples. Yeah, no, so I I guess I just always start with what good does it do me to complain? And so uh, I I just never do, that's how I've always operated. Uh, I chose to become an Allstate agent. I support Allstate, I believe blue. I will 100% of the time as I'm here. Uh, Have there been some decisions in 25 years that I've scratched my head and I mean, 2019, like how am I gonna get there? But look at where what that forced me to do. I had to reinvent myself, reinvest, and I'm a lot bigger of an agency as a result of that. Every single decision the company has ever made, if I've followed it, and this isn't just for Allstate, I, I, w- I would say the same goes for every company. If you follow your company's lead, um, you'll succeed. If you if you fight it and you ask why are you doing this to us and you know, what's, what's going on? Are you trying to get rid of agents? You're just never going to win. Uh, the people that I see that complain and talk about how their company uh, did terrible things to agents and they shouldn't have done this or tweaked that, or this is going to kill me as an agent. They're usually not as successful. Those that, can, that focus on what they can control. All I can control is today. What am I going to do today to be the best in my agency? What can my team do today to write the most policies uh, that they possibly can write? That's all we can control. As long as I'm controlling that and I'm growing, I'm confident good things, uh, good things will come. And it, again, lots of decisions. I would have said, man, how am I going to succeed? But if you follow it, it generally will, uh, will pay off. Uh, one, one, tip I always give to to new agents is uh, get in a circle of agents that are positive Mm -hmm. and talk to them every day. They're still 25 years later. I, I talk to at least five agents every single day. And if they're negative, I'm not going to talk to them there. I I only want to talk to positive people that are, that believe in what they do. If we don't like the company's decision, you can go to another company is always my thought. Uh, I love my company and we'll, we'll always support them and have their back just like they've had my back. That's a great, yeah, that's just such a great way to look at things. You know, it's just, we, it, yeah. Um, what, what are some examples of um, times where, you know, and looking back at that, you know, that change they made, you know, that, that seemed crazy, but, you know, by you supporting that and, you know, uh, understanding their guidelines and, and, producing what they wanted you to, you get heavily rewarded for it. So I think it's just the no complaining rule, I think is an important one. Um, Controlling what you can, you know, which is our um, attitude and our effort. Um, Well, and that that also, it also goes back to your your team. When I've had those stressful situations over the years, there's been lots of announcements like, oh my gosh, and it, it always works out if you follow it. But uh, my team would never know. They would never have any idea that I was stressed about any changes because we always lead with, you know, we have, we have a saying in my agency, happy people sell more. 
And the last thing I want them to do is stress out and worry that, oh my gosh, Jeremy's worried about where his company's going and the direction we better worry. Uh, that's going to do no good. So my team, anytime there is a change of anything uh, happening, we always put a positive spin on on it for our for our team to see. Otherwise, they're going to be nervous. Yeah. Also, if you're an agency owner, bad mouthing your own company, how is it that your producers could sell it? Mm-hmm. You no, know. Um, so, you know, I don't let my employees even say, Hey, we're expensive or, or say things like that, because that's just not the right mindset to have the enthusiasm to be able to, you know, close deals Mm -hmm. and believe in the company. So believe in the company, having trust that they're going the right direction and looking out for us. It's just, it's just such a better way to looking at it. And I've, you know, personally have gotten myself in trouble in the earlier years, not uh, understanding why certain things were certain ways, but what point is it to fight it? You know, mm-hmm. I think it's just so much better. And then you just, um, I think th- the support comes right back to you, the more you support them, mm-hmm. you know? So I think that's a, a real powerful um, message to other, all agencies, just to, you know, have a positive outlook of the company you represent and it's your choice. So it's not like, you know, you're forced, you, you made that decision. So uh, just like going back to point one, you know, uh, better to go all in and, uh, you know, support the company you represent. Yeah. So always got to look for a reason why you can do it rather than why you can't. Yeah. In all, th- all, all three points, look, look for opportunities uh, and yeah, figure out a way to do it r- rather than yeah, complain about it and go against um, yeah. Um, what, what works. So thank you, Jeremy, for sharing what, what's worked. You know, this, this is such a powerful post. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted to do is to drive home these points. Um, but yeah, just, um, Thank you for being such an inspiration. I remember the day still that you share with you, the day uh, I asked you for some advice was the same day you, you earned that bonus that you worked really hard for. Uh, and, and you're not kidding when you say you, you will share some numbers. <laughs> so uh, just an inspiration to all us agents and a tremendous resource. Uh, please keep doing what you're doing. Uh, and if anybody is not part of the RPOA as a member or a group member in the pages, I strongly recommend everybody to do so. Uh, but yeah, again, I really appreciate you um, being available. Uh, you, you did say that, you know, you're not comfortable usually doing these type of things, but you, 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 you uh, hit out of the ball. Oh, interview, uh, ball interviews part. and being on the spot are not my thing. I mean, you'll never catch me on a stage, Dan. I, I just am an insurance guy that likes to, likes to have fun and do well at, at my job. But no, I appreciate you having me on. And if anybody's watching this and has questions or anything, you can always email me. Uh, just Jeremy at insuranceroleplay.com. Always happy to chat with agents. Yeah. So I know you're not, uh, and I, we really appreciate that. And uh, you're always available, you know, on your posts, you know, when you, uh, when people comment and ask you questions, you always reply back for really thoughtful uh, and just, you know, your experience and uh, your, uh, your expertise is, is something that's making a big difference to all our agents there. So again, you don't like being on the spotlight. So I'm honored that you said yes to this and uh, being and having a conversation with me. So I really uh, have a lot of gratitude for uh, what you do for me and for, um, you know, uh, helping all of us out. So again, yeah. uh, thank you, Jeremy, for your time today. Yeah, uh, no, thank you. And thanks for all the help you do for agents as well. Oh, no, I'm trying. I'm just trying to follow your footsteps at a smaller scale, but <laughs> you're definitely uh, the inspiration. So thank you. Thanks again, Jeremy. All right. Take care. All right. You too. See ya.